are two kinds of people in the world. Those who love Shira and those who don't know how much they love Shira just yet. For the honor of Grayskull! Yep, that is unquestionably the most important moment of the 20th century. The scene from the 1985 movie Secret of the Sword where Princess Adora transformed for the first time into She-Ra. Beloved by kids of the 80s for over 30 years, She-Ra is getting a whole new lease on life thanks to the Netflix show She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. The original, however, remains a solid classic. And so, in order to remind you of the woman who shaped your childhood mind, or to whet your appetite to finally watch a cartoon that still holds up, here's everything you need to know about She-Ra in two minutes or less. When He-Man and the Masters of the Universe became a runaway hit and a pop culture phenomenon, toy manufacturer Mattel and animation studio Filmation knew they could further capitalize on the franchise by expanding the market from boys to girls. And so in March of 1985, they released a movie about He-Man's sister called The Secret of the Sword. Basic plot is this, Princess Adora is the twin sister of Prince Adam. Spoiler, that's He-Man. She was kidnapped at birth by Skeletor's old mentor, the evil Hordak, who raises her as his daughter with this terrifying banshee type filling in for a mom on the planet Etheria. Eventually, He-Man comes to Etheria. The sorceress tells Adora that He-Man is her brother, she realizes the Horde is evil and gets a sword that transforms her into She-Ra when Adora screams, for the honor of Skull. It also turns Adora's horse spirit into swift wind and makes him sound like a British Canadian dandy. By the fall of 1985, She-Ra had her own syndicated show called She-Ra Princess of Power, where she joins up with the Rebellion, a group determined to free Etheria from the evil forces of Hordak. The Rebellion consists of Bo, a good archer with a porn stash, Glimmer, who controls light, Frosta, who's super horny for He-Man, Madame Raz, a really incompetent magician who always says, dearie my, and has a great choice in hats, and while many more, Shira also became defender of the Crystal Castle, where Light Hope lived. He'd say lots of wise things and looked like the acid trip scene from 2001. They fight against Hordak and the evil Horde, including the legit terrifying Shadow Weaver, who, again, basically the only mother Shira has ever known, gaslit Adora for years of magical spells. There was also Catra, who gave us Eartha Kit vibes and was actually very glamorous. Scorpia, who sounded like a truck driver from Canarsie, also loved her and had a really intense eyeshadow thing going on. Leech, who stuck to things and produced an excess of saliva and also Entrapta, who had really long hair. Like all 80s cartoons, most episodes tackled some sort of morality issue, which a creature named Looky would explain to you at the end of every episode. The show ran for a total of 93 episodes and ended its run in December of 1986, shortly after a horse became a father on Unicorn Island. The character lay dormant for nearly 20 years as reboot rumors came and went. She started to pop up in He-Man comics from DC a few years back, but it won't be until Shira and the Princesses in Power on Netflix that we'll actually see her in animated form again. Stop the clock, please. Ooh, looking back 30 years later, She-Ra is a totally bonkers show, but it's also a lot of fun, has great animation, and some really wonderful messages that also sometimes are totally random and don't make any sense. But you don't have to take my word for it. Couldn't agree more. For the honor of Grey Skull, let us know your favorite Shira character in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe for more from Sci-Fi Wire. Hi, here's your friend Lucky. Did you find where I was hiding? Take another look. You know, Shira and her friends fight for freedom of speech. Ask your parents or teacher to tell you more about freedom of speech.